Good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, February 25th meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television. Would the Secretary please call the roll? Chair Meziers. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Rand. Here. Director Mannheim. Here. Director Laurent. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Owen. Director Gonzalez. Here. All right. Thank you very much. We um, have a quorum, I believe, if I count, if my math is correct. Um, we have six. Uh, directors here. Um, so we can move on to, do we have seven? Oh, seven, yes. Seven. Sorry, my math is not correct. <laughs> but um, that's why we have a vice chair to, uh, to <laughs> fact that's, check. That's my vice. For fact yeah. checking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're off to a good start. Um, so the uh, next order of business is oral communications. Uh, and any person can address the board during oral communications on um, any item that's not on today's agenda. Would anybody like to address the board? All right, seeing none, we can move on to our consent agenda, which consists of three items, uh, which is number four, to approve the revised minutes from our last November uh, meeting, and number five is to approve the uh, minutes of the meeting of January 28th, our last meeting, and uh, lastly, to approve recommendation of the Finance Committee uh, to accept the January 2019 financial reports. Um, before uh, I entertain a motion, would our um, Finance Committee Chair like to comment yeah. on the financial reports? Well, actually what I wanted to do is thank Tom Mannheim for something. He doesn't know he's going to be thanked, but uh, he and Keith over the last few years, Keith Gregor, our former chair, have um, kind of kept a series of spreadsheets that help us. We have the profit and loss, but something a little more basic so you can see how we're doing in terms of the rent and fees we're collecting from the uh, studio and, and from the uh, satellite workshop so Tom brings us every meeting and I just wanted to thank him for it because to be honest um, I go into the meeting I'm trying to remember is our goal 10,500 or you know some figure and I just know Tom will be bringing it so I just wanted to thank him for this and pass this out it, it's available for the public if anybody's interested it's just simply a different way of looking at the figures you have here and what it does show is thanks to our good management and nice community and uh, a good workspace we are uh, somewhat ahead in our revenues at this point now this isn't a massive amount so nobody should get excited <laughs> but it's better than where we were before so uh, anyhow you can just look at this yourself I don't want to take a lot of the meeting time but I wanted to thank Tom for doing it because when he brought it up he's been doing this for quite a while and I thought it was kind of nice and gives a little recognition for sitting at a meeting where mostly we're looking at numbers and asking questions and trying to stay on top of things as best we can so anyhow thank you Tom and I'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda I'll second that. all right we have a motion by director Hall and a second by vice chair Rand um, any further comment yes I just have a question um, on uh, item four the revised minutes I was wondering I thought that at the meeting where we corrected them we approved them as amended and I'm just wondering if we need to bring them back like this oh okay just a question for the future yeah um, I suppose we don't have to then no. um, but it's nice we do yes. yeah. it, we're, it's we especially this something. one will be especially approved <laughs> double <laughs> approved. <laughs> okay so that, it was on the um, Last agenda. Okay, thank right. you for that uh, point of order. Yeah. Um, count, on, count on you for. Uh, I'm still new at this, in case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further comment? Right, seeing none. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, that uh, motion carries. Okay, so now we can move on to the regular agenda, uh, and item number seven is the or oral report of the executive director. Okay. Thanks very much. This is a report for um, um, mostly January, but in the beginning of February. So, um, I the co-working center is in profit. We had more than twelve thousand dollars this uh, this month in February, and the um, so I do the report a little early, so we'll probably be more profitable than that. But I can only tell you as of the date I wrote the report. So you can see on Tom's report where that what that means for us. Um, so the which is it means we're 23 percent ahead of where we thought we'd be at this time so that's a good thing um, we have six uh, new companies or individuals joined in February which is kind of that's good with the, our record has been nine in a month 
but that was unusual. So this is good. We usually have three to four, so we're we're up a little bit. We're not as we're not as crazy at that outlier nine, but but up. And if you came in tonight, uh, you found there was no parking and uh, co-working spaces full of people. <laughs> so yeah. that, that was a, that's also a good sign. I love to see that. We have now there are often times when there are ten people in there at once, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Not counting the offices, but just at mm -hmm. the open seating area. So I'm bringing you a little data this month is different. I usually don't dig in, but I thought you might be interested to know. Um, I put a little pie chart in your uh, report that shows uh, the top 10 ways we have income from the co-working center because it's a lot of little things. The big ticket item is the private offices, which can be rented like by the day or by the month or by the hour. And uh, we make about 50% of our income there on those offices. But we also have like 20 other little things where we make money and it all adds up, which I think is fun to know about. So I hope you do too. <laughs> um, so just the mailboxes we have, we have a little like six, a six foot by four foot bank of mailboxes and it makes about $1,000 a month. So just in that little spot, which is, and because of that, people come in who, you know, so they come in and they rent other things too. So they, they, when they have their mailbox here, they come in and, and sometimes we'll do an hour in a office from time to time or use the conference room as well. So that's a, that was a great, a great thing. And you can see this is a, the pie chart is really, um, has a lot of really small things. So the, the red thing is um, the co-working cafe hours, and that's where you see all the people when you came in sitting at open tables. For those of us who printed this out in black and white, could you tell us which one? <laughs> 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 it's the, the, next, oh, the second hey, I've got it here, wedge. thanks. This looks a little bit like playing Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the um, the blue, the large one is blue. It's, that, it's, that's it's from six to eight o'clock, I <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, good. Okay, yes, we can use the clock. So, so the, the uh, yeah, from about six to eight is um, is the co-working cafe space. And then, you know, from, from eight to just a, a little, uh, you know, further to a little, not quite nine. 9.48. Yeah, I would say, yeah, almost <laughs> 10 is, um, <laughs> is virtual offices. So virtual offices are when people just use, they use our address and a mailbox and um, and they get a phone number and sometimes they have a file cabinet. So we make quite a bit from that for people who usually aren't here. So it's a really, it's so, and there's, you can read it when you get home, there's a whole bunch of little things. But I just thought it would be interesting for you to see that that the second half of the money is broken up into a ton of tiny things. Some of that's equipment rental, some of it's studio rental. It's all sorts of little things and it all adds up. So um, in underpaid services this month, the government meetings, uh, we did 17 in February. So just for context, um, when we do, when, during budget times, we'll do 24. <laughs> so so and we usually do 17 to 18 in a normal month. So this is pretty normal for us. We did pick up some new accounts, as we mentioned last time, but um, there it's keeping us at our average of 17 to 18. So when budgeting comes now, since we have these new things, it might be more than um, more than 24. Um, under the documentation service, that's a service that uh, uh, for Director Gonzalez. That's a thing that we do when we go out and document someone's lecture or. Um, something special. We don't shoot things like we don't produce pieces and that sort of thing. We don't compete with local producers, but what we will do is sort of an AV thing that we record. So if someone's doing a lecture series that they want to have recorded, we'll do that. And um, and we also do the wrestling championships I see that. <laughs> because um, we've been doing them forever. So uh, this month we did the wrestling championships and we also did, um, we have a production, so a lecture symposium scheduled for March. And um, under government, uh, under programming, um, we are still doing the programming for CMAP for a while longer. It's a it's, um, bigger project than we thought. Um, and this per we have a professional studio production in the works. I'm working with the producer. They want to do a, a series of six programs and um, in our studio. So that will be really good for us. And, um, and they want to push the envelope a little on technology. So mm. we'll see if we can learn to do some new things mm. and it'll be, f it'll be fun and uh it's it's a good it's a it's a nice project it's a good a nice thing we'll, we'll like to be involved with but i can't say it out loud until we actually have it but it's 
That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, Victor has hired two new, my report says one new technician, but now we've hired two. We needed two, we had two leave. So Chris Ivins, who's been with us for years, has moved to Boston, wow. and or Philadelphia. He went to the East Coast. Far away. Far away. It's far, away. <laughs> far, far away. Well, it's cold right now. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah. It's cold. Yes. He went to the snow, mm -hmm. and uh, and Jen also uh, also moved on. So we have two new people now, and they have great names: Kingston and Hudson. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, so. Um, I, their last names, not as memorable, but <laughs> <laughs> we have um, those two, they're being trained now, and uh, they both have a lot of experience, and so we're really excited to bring them on board, and nice. we think they can help us with some other projects like this thing coming up in the studio, so we're happy. Great. Victor did a great job picking out new guys. Uh, under equipment and facilities, we are still working hard to get fiber in the building, and uh, we have a couple of television producers who have studios here, or who have offices here and they need to upload big files so we can't get it fast enough um, we're waiting for a permit that we'll get supposedly on March 5th and no, then I don't know that'll be the next step Oops. and then there's three blanks at the end of the <laughs> column we need to do this and this and this and this and we're at here and there's three things after here and we're just waiting at the permit mm -hmm. start. city permit county permit well at first I thought I saw an email saying it was a permit they had to get from AT&T but I think that must have been wrong because I don't know how they would be issuing permits. Could but be to get in their pipe or something. It might Easement be that, yeah, yeah, the Easement. big pipe might be theirs. I don't know, but now they say March 5th, and so they keep us updated. They send me stuff every two weeks. It's always the same. <laughs> but not this week. <laughs> but they keep, yeah, pretty much they send me a thing that says not now. <laughs> but um, we're working really hard to do that, and, um, and we will. I mean, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It's just a lot of time. Mm. Uh, the One Button Studio is almost done. We uh, had the acoustic tiles installed, but now uh, we feel we need more. There's a, a little, still a little bit of an echo in there. It's a mm. real hard room, so uh, we'll, we'll take care of that hopefully in this week or, or at least in next week. Um, the green screen's in. It looks great. It looks wonderful. Keith um, Gudger, was our former chair, did an excellent job of installing it. It's smooth and he steamed it so it's not mm. wrinkled. Wow. It looks great. Mm. And uh, we've installed the uh, hardware, and when I say we, I mean Keith, um, <laughs> <laughs> installed the hardware to hold the backdrops, and uh, the backdrops that came were eight feet long, so we had to return them, and they're sending us six-foot ones, and uh, as soon as they come, we can plug them right in, and we'll be good to go. We'll get a little more acoustic um, tile on the wall, and, and we'll be ready to go. So it's real exciting when you go in, Everything works on its own. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. you just really, we'll be able to press one button. Um, and really, we're calling it, we're not calling it the One Button Studio. One Button Studio came from MIT, I think, mm -hmm. developed something like this for their professors so they could record their presentations. And um, we built, we adapted, and when I say we, I mean Keith, adapted this, um, <laughs> <laughs> this pull the schematic to, to work for us. So some, some equipment had to be updated and some had to be changed out. But And now um, uh, we are calling it RSVP, really simple video production. Because hmm. you will be able to go in, press one button, and record whatever kind of message you would like to get out. A lecture or a promo or an explainer, any of those things could be done in there. And we are uh, moving on to communications. Um, Ian, who is our community coordinator for the co-working space, has been doing First Fridays, and um, he did one this month with uh, Mosaic uh, People of Santa Cruz. They have a, a group, so we got a whole bunch of different artists came, and uh, we had a full house. It was really fun, and uh, Ian operated in the studio, the Vive, so people could come in and put on the, the virtual reality goggles and be underwater with the whale, and we should have shot them. Next time we'll be prepared. Because um, in the virtual reality situation, you can reach out to things and they move. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the really fun part. And so people were spinning, were poking sea anemones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <So> they, <laughs> and and uh, it was really fun. And people really got a taste of being underwater and being able to look behind and above and below and see things all around them. And uh, we've got other things next month. I think we might be doing a thing called Tilt Brush, which is art. You, you get, you have like all different brushes on your, you have these handles, so that's how you can reach out and touch things in the virtual world. And you can change pens and paint brushes and, 
and you can choose things over here like colors or shapes and you can make your own reality. You can paint it around you. Mm. So it's really oh. fun. So you can paint on many levels. You can paint oh. here and then you can reach oh. further out and paint no. there. Mm. <laughs> and so things are behind and in front of each other. So we think artists will like that. Mm. And we're working with um, Susan Arias, who's going to help us get um, more visual, uh, like uh, videography and photographers in. So some um, uh, video artists. I don't know if you guys are familiar with video art. <laughs> There's, mm -hmm. But um, yeah. uh, videographers make really interesting art with, uh, with video. And my favorite one was in the San Jose Museum. And it was, I went into this dark room and it was all rear view mirrors from cars. Uh, and there was video in the rear view mirrors. Yeah. So you were seeing what was going on mm -hmm. behind. It was a great exhibit. So we're hoping to uh, reach out to more, uh, to a lot of the uh, noted photographers and uh, video artists because uh, we think they would like to know what we have too. So we can bring mm -hmm. them in and they can get more familiar with what we have to offer as well as exhibit their own things. So um, they're right now the mosaic thing is still up and don't miss the giant banana slug in the lobby. That's <laughs> <laughs> really, it's as big as this table. Yeah. It's a really fun mosaic piece. Um, so uh, anyway, um, we have our next one actually, we're, uh, we're hoping to get a photographer in April. In March, we're doing a really fabulous um, painter who does animals and they're all very charming and funny and they're not like, you know, hunting dogs. It's, <laughs> it's you know, you know that big transformer cover that's got the, looks like an Irish wolfhound on it. He's like happy and his fur's mm -hmm. going all over. It's like, ah. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I wanna tell you about is um, I have to open something else to do it. Um, I, ha I had a conversation with our ad agency today, and so I have some information on our Google ads and how they're going. So I thought you might be interested to know, this is really exciting to me, that in January we had um, 372.3 thousand impressions. So. 372? Yeah. So thousand. that's like almost um, three quarters of a million impressions in January alone. On, on our ads? Uh -huh. What, what oh, yeah. is the, is, what's the definition of an impression? Someone sees it. So does that mean they don't somebody click, click they somebody, just saw. somebody is on the page where, yeah. the, where the ad is? Where it is. is. Okay. So it appeared to them, they may or may not click mm -hmm. it, because they were probably searching for something else. So we right. appear in the search results. So that if someone searches for lenses, we pop up with cameras. So people see us, okay. we have display ads, so we have pictures and everything. So people are seeing us, and, and you might not think that's valuable, but in the, in the beginning of Facebook, they had a thing where you could do the same thing. You could have an ad, and you only had to pay if people clicked on it. So there was this marketing guy who was kind of a genius. He wanted people to know who he was. He just wanted to brand himself. So he put a picture of himself and, and his name, and uh, so something like, you know, Bob Jones is a big goofball. Well, he made like millions of impressions and never paid anything because no one would click on an ad like mm -hmm. that. But people did know him. Mm -hmm. They got to know his name. They saw his name and his face over and over again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, we're not going to do that. So that was for one month? That was for one month. Wow. And that's in yeah. a county of 280,000? Yeah. But where it's yes. not limited oh, not to the even county. the county. I just realized today as they opened up the background and I looked at it, I was like, hey, you're missing half of the... <laughs> Half of the audience, they were only uh, targeting the city of Santa Cruz. Oh, wow. So now they're targeting the county. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that was. Wow. So this is only when the people in the city of Santa Cruz have Googled something that we have something to offer related wow. to. So I thought that was good, mm -hmm. pretty good. And um, we did. We now this number does not sound impressive. We got 391 clicks on our ads, mm -hmm. which was is good. They think it's not. You know, not amazing, but you know what we have is a little bit different than. We don't have enough parking spaces for. <laughs> <laughs> so one percent of the impressions are are, actual are clicks. converting to yeah, clicks. Yeah, yeah. So when you think of like, yeah, direct mail advertising, two percent is a good return. Yeah. So we're doing pretty good because this is even more random than that. Yeah. I mean, at least in that they know who you are. <laughs> so. And we didn't have to kill any trees to do this. Yes, yeah, so no trees were killed <laughs> in, the, in the making of these clicks. <laughs> So, um, so, and then we, on devices, so there were two really interesting things. The, um, mostly people get us on the phone. Hardly anybody uses a computer. Mm -hmm. One person used a television. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know who that could be, but 
it's interesting that that there are you can do you can use the television as your computer, but not many do it. And apparently, one person in Santa Cruz does. They <laughs> get us. What I didn't understand what you meant. Like by smart, they go to our website. TV, smart yeah, TV. it's a smart TV. They go to our website mostly by phones. They're they're seeing okay, our ads phone. on go, their phones. They, uh, yeah, we, it was the what you're what they're doing. So they're they're getting to our website via phone. Smart yeah. TV. Yeah, and they're seeing our ads on their on phones, Coming. not on computers. It's mm -hmm. mostly mobile. Mm -hmm. However, half of our audience is over fifty, which is really interesting. But um, what? Um, they told me was probably they said the rest of the audience is really young because <laughs> um, this is only the fifty the over fifty five set fills out forms and gives you all their information. <laughs> young people don't. <laughs> so they're like these are the people who are going you know responsible and they're going to fill out a form. The other people they just want the information and they're on. Mm. So half of our audience is very young. Half of our audience is over fifty, which is kind of interesting. Kind of describes Santa Cruz. Mm. Yeah, and mostly it's. Um, uh, and most of the clips have come from women. Mm. Follow, um, yeah, mostly women and then men. So, because there's no one else after that. <laughs> well, <laughs> but well, in my well, list, the women and men are broken down problems. to lots of different categories. Mm. But um, so it's mostly women, mostly over 50. But but it was just Santa Cruz City. So now we're going to broaden that out, and we're going to change our ads a little bit so that we're targeting a little more young and a little less older. So we can kind of even that up, and that's um, that's it. That's my report. Uh -huh. Great. Any uh, questions from board members? No, it's exciting. Yeah, that's yeah. very exciting. Yeah. The, the, the data nerd in me is is very gratified right now. Forward this to you. Yeah, that's that, just one month. Yeah. But we right. could, yeah, we can do. Now I know how to do this. I can get one. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing. Uh, <coughs> how long have we been running the ads? It's um, been. Three months or something? Uh, a little longer than that. I would say about six months. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had a we've had a full quarter, but it's been so long since the fourth quarter that I just thought, eh, we don't want to look at that. Let's look yeah. at January. Let's look at the recent past. So we looked at January. Very exciting. Well, thank you very much. You're so welcome. All right. Well, I'm excited by that. Um, so we can move on to item number eight, which is a report from the ad hoc strategic planning committee. Um, I know you met after our finance committee meeting. Um, earlier in the week. Is there anything that you'd care to report? We did. Uh, um, just briefly, I'm not going to go through um, all the details. There's a lot of stuff that's still um, in the works. But um, uh, we did have a third meeting. It's been a really interesting discussion. Um, and a couple of things I just wanted to note out of that. One is, and we don't have the results yet as a committee, but um, uh, we have reached out to the volunteers and to get their input mm -hmm. into what mm -hmm. we're doing as well, so we're looking forward to getting that information back. Um, we have done just a minor tweak to the mission statement, and you know, obviously we will bring that to the board for approval along with the complete plan. We also created a vision statement, which I, I thought was worth sharing with the group, which is that we're empowering our community to thrive in a digital world, which is sort of a, a, at a, at the very highest level, what it is we're trying to do as an organization. So I thought I'd share that. Um, we've, um, we, I, I think the, the work we're doing is creating sort of a roadmap to a strategic plan, and um, we, we've had some really thoughtful, uh, um, trying to, figure out what adjective you adverb use it. A very sort of engaged uh, discussions, I would say. Animated. Um, but mm. animated, animated, that's the word. Oh, very right. animated discussions. And um, I think it's going to be a very worthwhile um, effort. So more to come. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to hearing how that unfolds. And thank you that uh, the vision statement is very concise and yet um, profound uh, uh, phrase. So thank you. You bet. Um, all right. So um, we will move on to item number nine, which is uh, summaries from board retreat subcommittees. Um, we heard a little bit from our executive director about the the one uh, the RSVP, um, which is great news. And I believe Director O'Driscoll has uh, further to report from the library subcommittee after your uh, wonderful report last meeting. <laughs> well, I'm very excited because somehow. I managed to find a, a day and time when our three um, directors on the library subcommittee 
the executive director of CTV and the three important members of the library can all meet at the same time in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that as an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we plan um, to meet together on March 11th and at that time um, the board members can learn more about what the library has and what it might need and the library can learn more about what CTV has and we're going to meet before then to do our homework and be ready to do a solid presentation. So they are looking forward to it, I am looking forward to it. So, and we all agreed on the same day. That, that is definitely an accomplishment. Yes. I As somebody so. who's scheduling meetings now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating <laughs> just how challenging that can be. That's right. <laughs> Great. I take it as a win. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> I appreciate that. Look forward to hearing how that meeting goes. Yeah. All right. So we can move on now <laughs> to the next page, item number 10, which is the oral report from the voluntary Volunteer Advisory Committee. And uh, the committee chair is sitting to my right and is our vice chair. Right. Yep, and as Tom mentioned, uh, the last meeting we had with the Strategic Planning Committee, um, we uh, gave a couple of ideas to talk with the, the volunteers on Saturday. We met on Saturday, and it was a very lively discussion. There was a couple of excellent things that came out of it. Uh, some of it had to do with, you know, some practical things. But we actually had a very interesting discussion about what, what would we think is a quality program? Because I know that was one thing that the committee itself thought was uh, you know, not clear. What do we mean by that? And I thought that the group gave uh, some very excellent Great. suggestions. So we're looking forward, um, not this Friday, but the Friday after, to give a report to the rest of the committee, Nathan, Keith, you, me, and, and Becca, and uh, Judy Owen. So uh, we're looking forward to that. The other thing I want to report is that after we did a very interesting and nice and large meeting for nonprofits in orientation in um, last month, we had uh, a couple of people that came then to do the field camera class, mm. which you know you all know uh, Becca's husband does, and he does such a fascinating, um, you know, he has such a fascinating approach to it. Mm. People were just enthralled, and everybody stayed to the end. <laughs> and um, so one of these people from the orientation, from the pro nonprofit orientation came and just soaked it all in and she sent me an email, thank you, and when can I get started to do things you know, with it? So we'll have to work on that. And that's really the goal of the field camera class is that we train people to use our cameras and then that we form a group of people that will help other people in the community, especially nonprofits, uh, to do their own productions and their own shooting. And that's really the goal. Um, but you know, there's very few of us and hopefully you know, people like her pulling her in will get us there. And so that's, that's exciting news. So that's basically what I report. Great, thank you very much, Matilda. We have a question. Yeah, one thing when you were saying what's a quality program, well as one of the viewers I can tell you since we're in the new studios we have all the new cameras and everybody's trained the actual visual quality is immensely better and so I, that's just from a viewer of different things that I've seen and it's sporadic but it is interesting to see how much it's changed and I saw an interview Becca had last year with um, John Leopold one of our supervisors and I was watching it and my wife and I have divergent watching patterns, <laughs> and she heard it downstairs and thought I was watching KQED. Mm. Yeah. It was kind of surprising. Oh, you're what? What are you watching on it? Because that might be interesting to her. Yeah. And so, I told her it was community TV. So I think there's been a change. And that's just as a viewer. Yeah. One one of the people who came on Friday on Saturday, she said, you know, she regularly watches, and and she too said that she thought that the program had in, improved. But right. it's um, just all of the what the work's been done in the last two years, it's amazing. You know, and, and uh, Nick is here, and, and uh, Rich, um, Richard, Richard Giselle is mm -hmm. here, and, and they also talked about what they Richard do, mm -hmm. to, you know, and Nick is uh, a person who does uh, plays, mm -hmm. and he has a tremendous amount of preparation, 
And so the whole group felt that preparation that goes into the program, you really <laughs> see yeah. what comes yeah. out of it. What, what a concept. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the thing That's also the is, you know, what kind yeah. of preparation, so we talked about yeah. what kind of preparation yeah. do people do? You know, like Richard, he always makes sure that his bands are very well informed. Where is it gonna be? What is mm. gonna happen? Mm. What can they ask? How does he present it? And you know, and Nick does practice with his um, with his actors beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I once uh, directed one of his programs, and you know, he's very clear. You know, this is the script. This is what we're going to say now. And then he sits next to me. He said, "Okay, uh, I want this camera and want that camera." Mm -hmm. So it's really fascinating to see that people are really thinking about it. And I think it had a nice impression on Saturday on people. And so I'll give more uh, to, yeah. the, to okay. the group. And Looking and forward to hearing that. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it was, a, I thought that part of the, the, the meeting was enlightening for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. so. Great, thank you. Uh, any further questions or comments? Okay, well, um, let's move on to item 11, which is the or oral report of the board chair, um, which is me. And um, I did wanna, uh, last meeting when you mentioned uh, the VAC um, and the, the Strategic Planning Committee is seeking input from the uh, from the, the volunteers, I was really thrilled to hear that. I didn't say anything, but I, I did want to acknowledge that as somebody who spent 20 years plus as a volunteer here before I even attended a board meeting um, and, and was concerned when we, by necessity, had to reorganize, you know, the board uh, structure to not have elected, you know, volunteers. Um, you know, I was concerned that the volunteers would not have as much input, but through the VAC and through the input to the um, strate strategic well, planning committee, yeah. I'm glad to know that the concerns and the uh, feedback of the volunteers right, but is being there's heard. always more that can be done, and that yeah. came out also. There's yeah. more that we can do, and yeah. it's just a matter of who's going to do what because yeah. we're all volunteers. Yeah. But anyways, you're, you're well, we have a, a, a wonderful um, VAC chair here to to coordinate all of that. Um, so. Um, uh, what do I have to report? Uh, we attended, uh, Joe and I, uh, the memorial for Peter McGettigan over at the, the Ma. It was a wonderful event, um, well attended by historians, uh, city council members, current one at least, and um, a beautiful event. And uh, Joe represented the board. Um, and he represented the volunteers because he did the work of recording it. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as myself, right. Um, and, and I have to apologize to you for jumping in. I have to tell that story about Chris Crow, and I realized that probably wasn't very professional of me, you know, as somebody who's supposed to be documenting the event. That's okay. It was a very relaxed, and I think it would, have, it, would it really represented everybody there very well, in right. Peter's memory. Yes. So, um, yeah, it was, it was touching to me as somebody who, who is a great admirer and owes a debt to, to Peter McGettigan. And, um, you know, in the course of the event, um, I was uh, speaking with the event coordinator there, and I made sure to mention, hey, you know, we, uh, you know, you have a lot of wonderful events here. Um, we have this uh, um, uh, lease, equipment lease uh, opportunity, and if you'd like to discuss that, um, what we can do for you. Uh, and she said she'd be open to discussing that. So if we want to set something up, um, I think she'd be open to hearing from us and, and setting up something with the right. rest of the staff there. Because I think that was one of our goals out of our retreat was to um, work more closely with the MA since mm -hmm. it's such a, mm -hmm. a vibrant, um, flourishing mm -hmm. um, organization. So um, hopefully we can further mm -hmm. that. Um, and also, uh, Director Mannheim has brought to our attention a exciting um, prospective uh, new board member uh, for one of the three open, well, we have two open at large seats on the board and in the interest of building some suspense so that oh. maybe uh, people will tune in next, next month. Time. I'm not going to name him. He's, he's here <laughs> observing the meeting. Um, um, I was thinking about asking him to sing with a mask on um, uh, so we can hear his vocal chops. But um, anyways, uh, he's going to, if he's still interested after seeing our board meeting and, and attending, I know he's met with uh, Matilda um, and, and Becca. Uh, no, not. Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll meet him. him well, you can say his name is well known. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, tune in next next me. meeting. Um, yeah. If you're still interested and, and uh, you know, we will have another board member. And uh, I will also take this opportunity to mention that, yeah, we do have a South County um, 
So if you know anybody in Watsonville, we would love an attorney. That's always a, a plus. Um, and um, another at large. So if any of the board members um, have anybody in mind that they think would uh, bring something to the board, um, we have those open spots. And I will also mention um, that we have, and on March 15th, was it? Oh, yes. Can I say something about yes, that? Yes, please. Oh, you would like to. Please, please. Um, we will be, so we have this, uh, CTV has an equipment grant, and we grant equipment to um, local organizations and schools uh, who have video programs and need equipment or would like new or more or different equipment. And the application is on our website, and we will be doing a workshop on how to successfully apply uh, March 15th. March 15th, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, March 15th. On March 15th, sure. and that information is on our website as well. And uh, it's at 5 p.m., is it? 4 or 5, I think. Um, you keep talking. I'll I know. Check. Okay, we're gonna check <laughs> on that. Hold on. <laughs> but, Hold on. But, um, so any any teachers? Five, four any, p.m. Um, it's on the fourteenth. Four p.m. Four p.m. on the fifteenth. So you haven't heard too many numbers yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, That's correct. It's in March on the fifteenth at four p.m. here at CTV, and we're at three twenty-five Stokel Avenue. So any if you have um, if you work for or run a nonprofit organization or you're a teacher or involved in the school system and you'd like to have video equipment to um, train students with, we would like to have uh, make that happen for you. So please uh, look on our website for the application and attend the workshop. Thank you very much, Becca. That's uh, better than I could have put it. Um, I, I know your name was mentioned as somebody who might be able to get the word out, uh, Director Gonzalez, definitely to, can to do that. folks in education. Yeah. Um, yeah. I spoke with somebody who's got children at AFE he says he thinks he's too busy now. I mean, he likes the idea, but um, you know, I'd love to see. I don't know if the charter schools um, or you know, um, be nice to get some equipment out there for the youth of Santa Cruz County to um, do something better than what they can do on their their iPhones. Yeah, well, um, we just, we want to educate children, and we just want places that have the means to educate. If they, they just need the education part. We'll do the equipment. Right. Did, did we ever get any responses from Santa Cruz High or Harbor High? I know <coughs> Aptos. Uh, Harbor. Harbor? No, no, it's Aptos. Aptos, They're yeah, on the okay. same side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we have not heard from Harbor, Soquel, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz City Schools. Yeah, so we there. would love to help them as well. So um, I think that does it for me. Um, if anybody has any questions. Seeing none, okay. We can move on to item number 12, which is board member staff request for items to appear on the next meeting agenda. Does anybody have anything special they'd like to put on the agenda for next <coughs> time? Okay, seeing none, we can move on to announcements. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our all volunteer crew, which uh, consists of Linda Janakis, Karen Scott, Keith Gudger, Richard Dussel. Nick Kirkendall and Sherry Ross. Thank you very much for um, allowing this meeting to be recorded and making our secretary's uh, job easier. If uh, <laughs> hopefully you hit record, right? No, <laughs> keeps in there. We know. We know. I see the red light. Okay. Um, so um, with that taken care of, can we can move I on to. Oh yes. Can, please? Uh, can I join the meeting? Uh, we can make a motion. Make a motion. Okay. We have a motion uh, for item 14 to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.